in order to subscribe to my channel please click here or click here please share comment and like my videos and channel knowledge management implementation guide this section is specifically for a ServiceNow administrator ServiceNow developer or ServiceNow implementer as we will talk about how can you implement knowledge management for your client and customers we will talk about the approach an implementer should follow to implement knowledge management successfully let's start with the first step which is a major step for whole implementation and that is collaboration between ServiceNow implementer and knowledge process stakeholders it is very important to have a great collaboration and coordination between these two parties the solution and approach should always be aligned with both the parties before the implementation meet with stakeholders as the first step is collaboration between implementer and process owners so we will start the project by meeting with stakeholders you might have different stakeholders of knowledge process who have individual responsibilities like knowledge manager who defines the knowledge management process for day-to-day -day operations related to content publishing and usage knowledge admin who performs advanced configuration of knowledge management knowledge coach who makes sure that authors and users of knowledge management are following standards while creating and managing knowledge articles knowledge domain expert who provides domain expertise for the articles being created version author contributor to a particular version of an article content creators and reviewers who create and review the articles community managers who manages social content and then line managers who manages the authors who will create and use the articles information needed before implementation before we start the implementation you need to gather some information so that you can implement knowledge management accordingly like who are the end users who will be viewing and using the articles who are managers and editors any specific process flow before article gets published any need of integration with other module like incident problem change any need of migration of knowledge content from another system so these are the information which you would ask your stakeholders before starting implementation of knowledge management once you will get the basic information then you can start the implementation which will begin with adding roles to the users and groups and that's basically as per the responsibilities provided by stakeholders then you create one knowledge base or multiple knowledge bases as per the consumers of articles which means if stakeholders mention that there will be it users and hr users in that case you have to create two knowledge base one is for it and another for hr then perform form customization and changes as per business requirement then you have to create and attach the workflow for publish and retire in knowledge basis you can also use out of the box form and workflow if your customer is fine with that approach then you define access criteria for the people who can read and contribute to the articles 
then perform the configuration of properties as per business requirement. So there, there are a lot of properties in service now for knowledge management, which you can change or like update as per the business requirement you have from your customers. Then you can configure email notifications on different actions or events. So your customer will provide you some requirement that in what event, in what condition they want different notifications. And the last one is import articles if needed. So if your customer wants to import articles, maybe from another system, maybe in some Word documents, in that case, you have to do that as well. Information needed for creating knowledge bases. In order to create knowledge bases, you need to gather some information from stakeholders as well. Starting with who are KB managers knowledge base managers who will be the contributors who will create the articles access criteria in which you will have to know who should have read and create access in the knowledge bases then what are different categories of the article so that you can classify them and then you can create different knowledge bases and the last one is if customer wants to enable social Q&A feature for knowledge basis because that's an option you can enable if customer wants that social Q&A for that particular knowledge base. Once you are done with getting these information before creating knowledge base, then you can start creating knowledge base. That will be your first step in which you will create the knowledge base or different knowledge bases based on the details you have from your customer. Then you can set up who can read, write and create articles in those knowledge bases. Then you define created workflow. So the workflow which you have created in the previous section, in that case you will define that workflow in the knowledge base or knowledge bases. And then you will create the categories of that knowledge base. So whatever knowledge base you have, you have to define and create different categories for those knowledge bases. Overall, this is kind of high level approach you can follow when you implement knowledge management in service now. End to end creation of article. In this section, I will show you end-to-end -end creation of an article, of a knowledge article with different stages and features. After this section, I will show you all the features and components practically in my personal developer instance. You will be able to visualize all the features and learn about those features, how exactly they work so that you can show to your customers and enable in your knowledge management implementation. So let's start with end-to-end -end creation of the article. So we will start with create knowledge article. So knowledge author clicks on create new module and knowledge application. Then a new knowledge form is displayed. Author fills the form and put the data in the fields available on knowledge form. Once we are done with that, then author clicks on publish after updating all the contents of the article. Article goes for review and author sees a message at the top. You can see that says knowledge item is in review. Now, once it has been sent for review, approver will approve the article. As you can see, approver will show in the related list of that knowledge article and approval approver can approve that particular article. And then article is published, which also updates the workflow field with published state. And that's a very important part, guys, that when you are clicking on uh, approve, when you are approving the article, whatever article you have for review, that means for approvers, once it is approved, that article will be published and workflow field will be changed to published state. Now, in order to retire the article, so for example, maybe after one year, 
author wants to retire that article. So author will open that article and click on retire button on the form. Once article is retired, that means it has been sent, then it will go for approval again. So it goes for another approval that's for retiring approval. Initially we had approval for publishing, but this time approval is for retiring for the article. Now once it is approved, article is retired and workflow will be populated as retired. Now till now we were working on core knowledge management features without additional features. That means these were core knowledge management features of ServiceNow. And we didn't have any kind of additional features which gets enabled with the help of knowledge management advanced plugin. So then ServiceNow admin team, they activate knowledge management advanced plugin. Now this will change the whole behavior of knowledge article process, even the creation of knowledge article process. Once this is enabled, author clicks on new button to create the new article. Once that plugin is enabled. So that's what we are going to see what exactly will happen. Now in this time, first version of article will be created. So author will definitely see that form new knowledge form, but at the same time, new version will also be created. That will be the first version. And from this time onwards, system will keep on creating subsequent versions as per the numbering feature. And you can also see that article versions related list in that knowledge article form. Then author clicks on publish to publish the article. And then article is published. It went for approval for sure. And article is published now. There's a big difference when article is published with versioning and without versioning. So in case of without versioning, article is still editable, even it is published. So you can see in the left hand side of the screen, we have a form which is showing as a published, but it is without versioning. That means versioning is not enabled. But if you will see with versioning, all the fields are read only. You cannot edit, you cannot change anything, you cannot update anything in the article. Now what exactly you need to do to update anything in that particular article which is enabled with version. So you have to click on checkout button. So user author clicks on checkout button and now system will follow the same process we have it goes to draft it, we can perform the changes and then you further versions will be created as you can see here 0 0.01 0 0.02 1.0 so this is how versions will keep on creating now while creating the article if user clicks on view article so once record is created for that particular knowledge article there is a related link view article and if author clicks on that new uh, view article in that case author would see exactly the article view that same article with the contents which author has has provided how exactly that article will be visible to the end users and that's called article view there is another feature that's diagnostic that means user criteria diagnostic so below view article button related link you have another link that's called run user criteria diagnostic so author will click on that particular link once author will click on that this will open a new screen author can select the user select the record type maybe article maybe knowledge base and then you can diagnose what kind of access this user has. And if you will click on diagnose, this will show the results that for the type of access that selected user has for article or knowledge base as per your selection. Author can also click on upload new version link. 
that's another link just below run user criteria diagnostics so if you, author will click on that option then you will see a pop-up and this pop-up you will be able to browse and upload the file so that you can add another version for that particular article you have in the system and if you will upload it another version will be uploaded and then you can just, just submit for publishing end users can also click on these stars and these are basically feedback to gather the feedback so because different teams different users different authors they create different kind of articles now all the viewers all the users who are using the articles who are viewing the articles who are reading the articles they definitely want to provide the feedback because you definitely want to gather the feedback that how your users are are basically feeling about the article uh, which you have published so in that case you will have you can just users can provide three star five star two star one star as per their uh, i would say satisfaction now these feedback whatever users provide the feedback these feedbacks are basically captured in in basically particular feedback record table so we have a table where these feedbacks are captured what exactly user has provided so this is the end-to-end -end process of creating articles and glimpse of few features of knowledge management.